Hello you lucky buggers, and this is the very first tutorial for Cinema 4D Pro Tips. My name's Ed Brown and my intention is to bring you video tutorials that aren't so dull. The idea is to cut the shit and get real working industry people to show you how not to drop shiny balls in an HDRI environment onto a floor using physics. We're going to show you actual practical stuff you need to use on the site, get the job done and not get caught watching video tutorials when you should be doing a job that you're a paid expert in doing. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how you're going to rig up this lovely crankshaft, piston and conrod and motor thing. The first thing I'm going to show you is how we're going to set up the alignment of all our gears. So if I go into my helpful overlay, I want to make sure that they're all rotating around the Z axis or B. So let's just go through and make sure that they're all on there. That one is, that one isn't, and that one's pointing the wrong direction. So let's just get those in, it's this one, gear one, let's just rotate that around, make sure the uh, crankshaft here, yep, that's correct. And then we'll look at the uh, piston and comrade later. Right, I'm going to add some user data to so that we get some constant rotation we can work with and see if everything's working correctly. So I'm going to add a null user data. And then I'm just going to add some user data to this null. Because the angles use radians, it's a good idea to keep the user data values pretty small. So here I've got a really small step so I can in increase that slider very, very, very small increments. And the maximum is going to be about 5. Um, you can always edit those maximum values later. So let's make sure that's on 5, that's on 0. Okay, so that's, I think, all we need. So I'm going to throw my user data in here, get up my channel. Oh, it's actually on the espresso tag itself. Shouldn't matter though. And then in this, I'm just going to add this to my HUDs, throw it up here. And you can set the color yourself. Uh, for some reason, mine's default, it's blue. So I'm going to make sure it's always on, I'm going to hide the widget, and there we go, we've got our use data slider in. Let's just then uh, put in frame on the time. So time counts in seconds, which is pretty useless for what we want. Just make sure that's in like this, and we're just going to multiply those together. And there we go. So let's get in our main drive shaft here. And because that's going around the B, like this, so we're just going to hook it all up like so. Local rotation B. So let's make sure this is on a value 
higher than zero. And hit F8 to play. There we go. Very good. So we're going to use the main drive shaft to drive the rotation of everything else. So instead of coming straight off the user data multiply here, we're going to use the main shaft rotation to drive its child. We're going to use that child's rotation to drive its child. And therefore all the gear ratios are going to make sense. You might notice that in my, uh, in my gears here, I've got these cog wheels. And these are a really good way to check visually how many teeth you've got in your gears. This is how you calculate how fast they're meant to go. It's nothing to do with the radius or pi. It's literally about the amount of teeth that you've got. I didn't know the number because I inherited these as CAD models and so I had to find out how many teeth I had. You need to find out what this number is. So I just renamed my two cogwheels here so that I always know what they are. So to calculate the speed, we're going to use a range mapper. We just add the range mapper between the two gears that have to interact like this. And then we, I'm going to drag in gear one here, which is this one. So get the local rotation B, put it in, put it in. To find out what this range mapper needs to be set to, first things first, the output up is going to be negative because it has to turn in the opposite direction. Then I know that the main drive shaft has 8 teeth and this gear has 47 teeth, so I need to divide 47 by 8. So I'll do that like so, 47 divided by 8 equals 5.875. I'm going to copy that value and make sure it's in the input upper like that and now perfect. I'm just very quickly going to hook up the other stuff. And on this one, you can see that we've got a smaller gear on the back of it, and this one's 18 teeth. And our second gear here has 33. So, copy that. Check that out. This also will need an offset. Now I'm going to parent up the other parts of the crankshaft. So I grab this, make sure it's under. I'm going to grab the con rod as well and parent that to the crankshaft. Now I'm not going to hit F8 and play this right now because it tends to be easier to set it up in situ. Here I've got my con rod and I needed to make sure that the axis was exactly in the center of this pivot point. The way that I do this is that I select exactly these outside edges and if I get my path selection tool or even my loop selection, I 
can just grab these outside edges and then with axis center I can go selected edges and execute and that will put the axis exactly where I need it. The alignment's a little trickier but it needs to make sure that the Y axis, the plus Y, is pointing down the shaft here. The piston needs to be set up so that the, con the, the piston pin is going exactly through the hole in the end of the conrod. The way I set this up is that I just center axis on this conrod pin here. and then I add a null, reset the PSR, and then I add that null as the root of that small hierarchy for the piston, as I've got here with the piston null. I'm going to attach the conrods via a null to make sure that the conrod itself isn't being rotated uh, directly with the constraint so I'm going to just make sure that that has a null above it. So I can just hit, because it's got all the axes in the right place, I can just group it like that. And there we've got our conrod attach. So here's the tricky bit where we get into the whole constraining the piston thing. Um, I'm not going to do it the mathematical way, I'm going to do it the way that 3D Kiwi on Cinema 4D Cafe shows you in his very handy little video that I'll post up. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze the transformations on the piston attach object. And the reason I'm going to do that is that I want to be able to reset everything to zero and it will come exactly where it is at the moment. So hit freeze all on there, and I'm going to drag my piston attach into here, and I'm just going to add constants so that it can't move in a direction I don't want it to. If we have a look, that will be this direction and this direction. So that's the X and the Z. Next, I'm going to add my aim and up vector constraints to conrod attach. This is the null that this is hanging off of here. So in order to understand how this is going to work, I've got a little overlay, because I'm excellent. So we need minus y is pointing directly up, so we need positive y down the length of it, and it's going to rotate around the z-axis. So let's add, go to character, constraint, and we're going to, first thing we're going to do is make it aim in the right direction. So aim, piston attach. We just need to make sure that it's going down the Y plus for that to work. Now, you might get some very, very weird results when you're doing this aim usually what it will mean is that this is rotated along that axis weirdly and that's why it's often necessary to make an up vector and the up vector is uh, it it shows the axis that it's going to rotate around and the way that we do that is we point at an object that is exactly along that same axis that means it can't be underneath the conrod attach null because it will be affected by its rotation so we're effectively going to copy that attach null, shift null, reset PSR, grab it, drag it out here along that rotation axis, along the Z axis here. Put it above the Conrad attach null. I'm just going to call it up vector. Um, you might not actually find this necessary until the thing starts going crazy wrong. 
So in here we're going to have to add it in the same tag and you can see we're doing something right because it's completely wrong at the moment. So go to our up vector, select the up vector tag. So the up vector is actually Z minus. And the axis that cannot rotate is Y. The next thing we want to do, provided that that tag has worked correctly, is make sure that our piston attach maintains its distance. There is such a thing as a distance constraint, but it tends not to evaluate very well. And the one that the help file refuses to tell you is the correct one is the clamp. So go into our constraint tag on the piston attach, add a clamp, and then all you have to do is point it at the Conrad attach. And that's it. So we've got a system where the user data is controlling the speed of everything else, including the piston. Um, next, I'm going to show you how to get the piston to actually hit something and for that animation to be made completely in espresso. It's pretty rare, so keep your eyes peeled for my next video. And if you like what you've seen today, please subscribe because otherwise I'll probably not bother. Have a good day. Cinema 4D Pro Tips. Well, hey guys, I'm glad you watched my tutorial. And if you want more, don't forget to hit the 